Hello, I'm Jonathan O'Toole. I'm in Nakuru, Kenya, and it's raining right now, but the sun is shining. One of those beautiful evenings when it's raining along with the sunshine. And I want to talk to you this evening about forgiveness. I don't want to give a sermon. I have the Bible here with me, so not a long sermon, but I want to talk about forgiveness in the context of geopolitics. I was in Kampala just a few days ago, and I passed by the American Embassy, and I was in the American Embassy just last year, a couple of times, for um, some personal business. And as I passed by on my way, uh, coming back to Kenya, I saw they were flying the, uh, the so-called gay pride flag underneath the American flag. In defiance of Uganda, of the president, of the government of Uganda, of the parliament of Uganda, of the will of the vast majority of the people of Uganda, which passed the anti-homosexuality so-called bill in Uganda, and the president signed into law, prosecuting, as God's word says, sodomites for committing the abomination of sodomy. I want to say in very clear words, and I don't want to put a lot of conditions on this, very clearly, no nation that legalizes sodomy, so-called LGBTQ, sodomy, buggery is what the English criminal system called it from the days of Henry VIII up until the 19th century. Buggery laws, I think, even in the 20th century, were still on the books in the United Kingdom. And in America, on into my lifetime, I was born in 1979, until Lawrence v. Texas, the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, unlawfully opposing God, for no law is higher than the law of God, uh, wiped away by their judicial decree, our anti-sodomy laws. It was buggery in the UK and in the English tradition, but the Bible calls it sodomy. Sodomy. No nation that decriminalizes sodomy, and especially that, like the United States of America, uses its u unique economic and political leverage to try to bully other countries like Kenya, like Uganda, like nations all around the world. By the way, they've done it under Trump. Republicans have done it. Democrats have done it. It's not a party issue. It's been the satanic policy of the United States government. And I reiterate, no nation that tries to force other nations to decriminalize sodomy and to tolerate the abominable act of sodomy. No such nation has a right to exist, and there's no forgiveness for that nation. The people can repent, but that's the key word. In the book of Luke, you know, we hear, especially in the last hundred years of Christianity, a fake version of Christianity and a fake version of the gospel that de-emphasizes repentance. But, you know, the gospels stand alone, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but if you don't read them all, it's like a, a criminal trial and you only have one witness. There are four witnesses available, and yet you've neglected three of the witnesses. Everyone had a different perspective. To get the complete picture of any thing that may have happened, and in this case we're talking about the life and teachings of who? Jesus Christ in the Bible. We've been given four witnesses. Each has a distinctive point of view. When you harmonize them, you get the complete picture. And it's very important, just like in a criminal trial, because we're talking about a man who claimed to be the Son of God, greater than Abraham. The Word, he said, before Abraham was, I am. And his teaching on forgiveness, the teaching of Jesus Christ on forgiveness, has been wiped away by Christians, and they've trivialized it, and they've equivocated forgiveness with having a good heart toward people. Well, let me say, God does not impute forgiveness on us, and we cannot impute forgiveness on others. Forgiveness is proffered. It's offered by a generous and merciful God, but conditionally. The important condition is our repentance. And it is offered to individuals. To individuals. God places a high um, importance on an individual. A government, God did not, Jesus did not die on the cross for governments. Jesus did not die on a cross for your tribe. For you as a member of your tribe, for your people, yes. But for individuals. What peoples have to do in terms of governments, is obey the Lord. If they've gone against his law, that government has to submit and change. There's no, there's no forgiveness. And if the United States of America does not stop 
and repent right now, bullying every country on earth, including Russia, okay, including every African country, to decriminalize sodomy, to promote sodomy, the United States of America and her allies in the West will be destroyed. Jesus said, for individuals, if your brother sins against you, rebuke him. Now, you never hear that part. Okay, I'm rebuking the government of the United States of America, of which I am a citizen of that government. We, the people, created it. The states came together, the colonies, and created the federal government. We did not authorize you, and God has never authorized you, to bully people to commit the wicked, satanic abomination of sodomy. God will destroy you. There's no forgiveness unless you repent. Right now, you individuals repent and yesterday, right away, ex post facto, change this policy before God wipes you off the face of the earth. Rebuke your brother. Okay, Brother Biden, <laughs> you say you're a Catholic Christian. I'm rebuking you in Jesus' name. Stop it. Before God destroys you, who is able to destroy not only your body, but your soul forever in hell. Stop it. Stop it, Democratic Party. Stop it, Donald Trump who supported uh, this uh, foreign policy of the U.S. State Department to force every country to legalize butt sex. It's not even sex. Filthy behavior. Disgu disgusting behavior that deserves death. Stop it. If you can't stop it, stop pushing it on others. Have decency before God destroys you. Jesus said, rebuke him. I'm trying to do that now. Okay? I have no love for the government, but for the individuals, I'm rebuking you. In Jesus' name, and for you other Christians who tolerate it, who want to play it down, who want to say the Bible is old, that Moses is outdated, that what he said about executing sodomites is old-fashioned, <laughs> well, guess what? You're a slave to sodomites, and your government has enslaved you uh, to use your taxpayer money and mine to promote sodomy because you failed to take the word of God seriously. Moses has not been canceled. Yes, the Old Covenant is canceled, but in terms of what he said about sodomy, the Lord Jesus Christ is in complete agreement and never nullified that. They deserve death, exactly as Uganda has recognized. Thank the Lord for President Museveni and the Ugandan Parliament. Now, Jesus said to Peter in the Gospel of Luke, rebuke your brother, and, now this is the part, that Christians of every flavor and denomination have been ignoring. And pastors have been failing to preach most of the time. Most of the time. If he repent, forgive him. Even 70 times 7. They want to emphasize the forgiveness, but they don't want to include what Jesus said. Rebuke him, and if he repent. Jesus did not say, just forgive people. If it's something small... You can just let it go. I can let it go. He took my pen. You know, he, 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 he took my, 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 my crisps. He took my chips when we were having lunch. You don't care. It's trivial. It doesn't matter. When it's something serious, if a man has taken your wife, if a woman has stolen your cow, and that was your livelihood, they must repent. Bring my cow. Repent as David did for stealing Bathsheba. Repentance is key. And Christians have wiped it away as though somehow the desire to release your own soul from bitterness and from holding a grudge is equivocal to repentance. No, you can be willing to forgive. You can let it go in your heart, not dwell on it, have a good spirit, not be bitter, and yet the person is not forgiven. You can't just forgive someone. <laughs> Just like that, even Jesus said, if he repent, let Jesus' words have the authority that they do have. Otherwise, fall under his judgment. Because if forgiveness is just like that, then nobody is in hell. But guess who's going to be in hell? Everyone empowering, collaborating with, and assenting to the policy of the Western governments, that is the United Kingdom, the European governments, Washington, and every government that is collaborating to coerce the rest of the world to normalize same-sex marriage, but even beyond that, the act 
of sodomy. They say, well, it's consenting adults. Well, guess what? That's the image of God. God has a copyright, and God is tolerant and merciful, but he has the right, the right on his copyright, which is this image that we bear. It's not ours. He gives us liberty, but he has the right to draw lines. And if you think he doesn't have the right to draw a line about what we do with his image, which we bear, which is not our own, figure it out. We don't have to go to the same church. Muslims and Christians agree on this. I agree with my Muslim friends and even Hindus and people of other faiths. But with the God, the creator, has the right to draw certain lines. We don't all go to the same religion or church together, but there are certain things as human beings, we are not allowed to tolerate. And I prove this to you by saying, read Leviticus. And you're saying, oh my God, read Leviticus? Come on. Yes, parts of Leviticus were for everyone. When you read the explanation to Moses of why the Canaanites were kicked out of the land, the Bible says, vomited out. Vomited out of the land. The reason they were vomited out, among those reasons, the normalization of adultery, child sacrifice, which today we call legalized abortion. But a big one was a man laying down with a woman as though that, uh, excuse me, a man, I'm going to edit that out. A big one was a man laying down with another man as though he were a woman. What we today call sodomy, buggery. But now we use stupid euphemisms designed to mask what it really is. We say homosexual. The Freudians loved this term, homosexual, as though somehow the two sexes will come together and engage in sex. But that's not sex. <laughs> sex, by definition, is intercourse between the complementary sexes. The day that one of these sodomites poops out a baby, that's the day you know there's such a thing as a homosexual. In reality, they're masking the biblical reality that there are sodomites, and they're engaging in the felony of buggery. Figure it out, repent, change your language. The Bible says in Psalms 50, to him who orders his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. Don't accept these secular terminologies that are designed to obfuscate and obscure the truth. Repent. Don't be ashamed of wanting to criminalize sodomy because the reason... Now we come back to my point from Leviticus. Why read Leviticus? Because the reason the Canaanites were kicked out of the land, the land vomited them out, vomited them out, because they normalized buggery and sodomy between a man and another man. Showing, and they were not Levites, they were not Israelites, they didn't have to, it wasn't for eating pork, it wasn't for any of the special rules given only to the children of Israel. These are universal laws for all mankind in all ages at all times. You cannot do certain... God is very tolerant. He winks at some things, but there are some things that God says, that's it. You forfeited. You know, there, there are sins and there are sins. There are some which are abominations. Abominations, meaning you no longer have a right to exist as a country, as a people, as a tribe. You no longer have the right to live and suck air on God's green earth when you do these particular things and you won't repent. Well, I've warned you. I'm just one man, but I've warned you. And your blood and this burden is off of my chest and off of my head.